John Coltrane on tenor sax, leading a band of other maestros on Blue Train, the title track of his 1957 album. Lee Morgan is on it, on trumpet. Curtis Fuller on trombone. Kenny Drew on piano. Paul Chambers on bass. And Philly Joe Jones on drums. This is Lead Stories. I'm Beatrice Lead. <laughs> and uh, I'm still wondering how I get my brain around all the things that are happening in this world. And I figured out <clears throat> that I can't. So I'll bite off a piece at a time. Today we're going to be talking about what else is there to talk about? We'll be talking about Mr. Bloomberg, Michael Bloomberg, who has declared he will run for president. As we know, Bloomberg was a three-time mayor, three-term mayor of the city of New York. Not only is he running, but he'll be running as a Democrat, yes. So what the heck is going on here? Here's a guy who earned his stripes as a conservative, a Republican, a libertarian, and now he has announced that he sees he's more compatible with the Democratic Party, and we're going to discuss this. Don't accept it just as because he said it. He is running as a Democrat. So what's going on here? I really need your help to understand this because apparently it is above my brain's capacity to understand this. Can the party survive? Instantly he has made the party a hybrid party. And can the party survive as a hybrid party? Is the party renting out space to any contender who can pay? <laughs> if you have the money, you could run Yes, you too could run as a Democrat. Is there, should I say it, a quid pro quo with Bloomberg? Will it help Trump, in fact, and the Republicans more than the Democratic Party and its candidates? And there are at least four million other questions that should be asked at this time. And we're going to start asking them because this is insane. His decision to run as precipitously as it was announced. And we just have no other choice, really, at this time but to deal with it. But what is dealing with it? I'm relying on your astute political observation to kind of break this down. What is, what is this? <laughs> what is this period to be called? What is it about? What is about to happen? Do you have any strong feelings about it? And if so, well, share. 888-874-4888. We, we're not going to waste time today. We've got to get into this as quickly as possible. Because people are waiting to find out what other people are thinking. It is really insane. Now, it could be that it might turn out to be a, a very interesting development. But it certainly is not the kind of development that we're used to. And maybe... It's time we experience such a development. I can't tell you 
heavy. I've gone backwards and forwards on it, thinking, well, what is happening? What exactly is happening here? What is happening that we don't know? And worse, what is happening that we do know? <laughs> it is a mind-boggling situation. Now, it could be a good thing, or it could be a very bad thing, depending on what the thing is, but we don't know. I mean, a guy gets up who we, you know, he had talked about, he had mused about running for the presidency many times. But to have it happen, to have him announce it, and already the ads have been bought and are being played and being shown and being printed. So this is not a fluke of an announcement. This is a very serious announcement. Daryl from New York, what do you think this is? Hello, you trees, Daryl. How are you doing? I'm surprised, you trees. Let's just take a calm, deep breath. Let's take a calm, deep breath. Because you lived up here. You were here. Bloomberg's not a libertarian or a Republican. He's a capitalist. And he's positioning himself to maximize his capital. He, he, he is it really just about maximizing capital? Is it, or is it as straightforward and cut and dried as that? Or is there something else we yes. should look into to find out what could be behind this move? Okay. You have a man who wanted to regulate the diet of people, regulate regulate everything in their lives if he, if he could get away with it. So he wants to bring Bloomberg happiness to the rest of the country. What, what, I'm finding interesting is when he went out to A.R. Bernard's church, um, and I remember that in, oh, wow, 2005, the big five African-American ministers all backed Bloomberg over Freddie Ferrer, I believe it was. Yes. That was uh, Reverend Calvin Butts, Reverend Floyd Fake, A.R. Bernard, and there were two more. It's like, <clears throat> because he had the experience. He was going to open up the city. What could have been done and what can still be done is he wants to make amends for stop and frisk. Well, let's set up a foundation, put some real cash in there, track down all the people who were negatively affected, and change their lives with college or but, whatever. But you, the, you're taking the, us back into, uh, certainly back in time, but no, you're I'm not telling right us now. the significance. That's what we need to get to today. What is the significance of his entering the race? Okay, he sees what many of us see is that if, if um, President Trump is elected again, it is, it's against our interest. So... What can I do to best position myself? How can I deploy my capital to, A, protect it against an insane downturn that is waiting to happen, and, B, to keep the population as calm as possible? You have a lot of people who are insanely in love with um, President Trump, and you have a lot of people who have less capital. More important, they have less weaponry who feel oppressed and, and crazed by the machinations of the current president. So if I had $50 billion, why wouldn't I throw my hat into Tom Styron's in the ring? He doesn't have $50 billion. What's the other billionaire that's, that's running? Aren't there two, two other um, yes, uh, Democratic but my brain billionaires? Is, is... Got it. See, what you're, what you're attempting to see... I'm still lamenting. But don't uh, get straight to your point. 
I don't need All right, two the, the press is, conversation is today. He, he I be, need your ideas. He, I need to hear right. from you what you are seeing in this move. He could be the FDR that Barack Obama wasn't. Okay. Got it? Well, I'm asking you, only... so you're telling okay. me. Yes, I'm telling you that with that kind of money, and, and, and because he's in the information business, even if, even, if he is, uh, even if he fails to obtain the nomination, he's a... Why uh, is he running a as a push. Democrat? Why? Because that's what's open. You can't run as a Republican. He can run, he run as any party he wishes. Why is he running as a Democrat? Because the Democrat, the Democratic Party is up for grabs. The Republican Party is caught in the 18th century. They want to protect their jobs. Their jobs, the people who, you, who Michael Bloomberg would have to appeal to in order to even convince the politician that he was viable, hate him for his right. Jewishness, his moneyness, his whateverness. Okay? So you have to run where you can go. And the Democrats take anybody. Well, we shall see about that. Thanks, Thank you, Carol, Patrice. For Stay your, well. Your and... Thank you. Talk to you soon. Martin... Thank you. Martine from New York. You're on the air. Hi, Trace. Okay, hello. so in my hello, yes, I'm listening. Okay, in my opinion, he's running as a Democrat because he knows the Democratic leadership will support him because they're not very happy with the people who are currently leading in the polls. Okay, that's why Is that I feel the only like he's reason running. he's running as a Democrat. Yes. Okay, I disagree. I think there are okay. other reasons he's running as a Democrat, but I think we'll we'll get it in the course of our discussion today. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, Martine, for calling in. Gwen from New York, you're on the air. Oh my God, I'm glad you got me. Hi, Utrees. Hi, everybody. Hi. Okay, you. I'm okay, Utrees, but I want to tell you something that uh, there is there is nobody that I can't stand more than Bloomberg. And I think your first caller is wrong. He is no FDR. He's a miserable little tiny man that made a ton of money to make up for every other deficit he has. He is dangerous because he is the fist in the velvet glove. Uh, even, even worse than Giuliani, even worse than Trump would be Bloomberg because of the enormous amount of money he actually has. But more than that is his connection to the media. Today, I found out that somebody uh, had a website uh, that was uh, around when he was hold in there. On, hold on, hold on. I like to stay on topic, as you know. Well, I, 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 I'm topic. going, this is on this one topic. This is him closing down this woman's website because he didn't like what she had to say. And this is what he did the whole time. If you, if you went up against We're not going back there. We're staying on the question. Did you hear the question? I heard the question, but I think it's, if you yeah, can't so look at the history, the you all know the future. You can move <laughs> along. We'll have more than enough time to discuss the other parts of it. But for today, okay. as we start the first installation of this discussion, <laughs> uh, let's Why deal doing with it. it. What is significant about his run as a Democrat? His run as a Democrat, what's significant is the enormous amount of money that he has to pay for it, lock, stock, and barrel. He doesn't have to collect any funding. He's already doing the same shtick as he did in office saying that he's not going to take a salary. Big deal. But the reason why I think that he wants to take this position is pure, unadulterated power. What comes after money? Power. But the problem is, is that Mr. Bloomberg is such a wonderful low-key kind of person with a very iron will behind him that I believe that we're going to see the same kind of problems we were left with in New York if he becomes the president of the United States. He is not a progressive. He's not even a centrist. I think the one thing the fellow said before me is he's pure pure capitalist. What is it that you're not listening to? What is it that you're not hearing? You don't know why he's running. You have to call him and ask him why he's running. How would anybody know why he's running? 
I, I mean, I guess, I guess it's power. Political observer. Mm -hmm. Why do you think he is running as a Democrat and running as a Democrat? Oh, oh, he's running as a Democrat because I actually think he couldn't beat Trump as a Republican. He has too many, too many cracks in his, um, too many cracks <laughs> for him to make it. I'm sorry. <clears throat> for him to make it as a Republican, they would start. He was remember before he was a Republican, he was Democrat. So the first thing the Democrat, the Republicans would do is they would out him on his past of being a Democrat and then flip-flopping over to being a Republican. because And, you know, the reason why he ran on the Republican ticket was because he could stay in the race in New York City. So it wasn't that he was an all-out Republican. He wanted to be able to stay in the race for as long as he could. And if he had run on the Democratic ticket in New York City, he would not have made it through the primary. So it's kind of the same thing here. If he runs on the Republican ticket... There's no way he's going to beat Trump because Trump is going to pounce all over him for his affiliation to the Democratic Party. And also Trump has, you know, I think as far as the Republicans are concerned, this is their candidate. This is the one they really want. That's why no one else is challenging him. So the only way to get into the race is to be a Democrat. So he's going to get into the Democratic race. He's, he does have things that are unique in the Democratic race, and that is the fact that he has the ability to pay for the entire run by himself. He also doesn't have to take a salary. But remember, he also has this wonderful uh, product, and that is that he owns the media. I mean, he's very, 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 very close ties to the New York Times. They do not dare usually step step on him they will they never come out with you know any kind of really negative articles about him he also has npr in his pocket so he has media connections that are really really powerful and this i think is what he's thinking nationally that can make a springboard for him so why not run on the democratic ticket okay but he is not in charge of deciding he could run as a democrat the democrats are yeah, but we're the Democrats. I mean, anybody can join the race. You know that. Anyone can join the race as long as you have, you have to have uh, the money. <clears throat> First, you have to have the money. And then I, I don't know if he's got the percentage yet that would make him be able to qualify for any of the debates. I don't know if he has enough of that yet. But, you know, anybody can jump into the race. And he certainly has plenty of ties to the Democratic Party. Don't be ridiculous. He's got lots of friendly ties on the Democratic Party side because in New York City, you know, people call themselves Democrats, but they're not really Democrats. They're, they're really much more conservative, and I'm talking about in the, in the aspects of money. So he's got huge connections when it comes to um, the, the, uh, the, the businesses. But remember that gigantic connection he has to the Washington Post. Who is talking about Bush, I mean, I mean, Trump all the time? The Washington Post and Jeff Bezos. So he's very tight with Bezos, and Bezos is the one that tapped him and asked him again, why don't you do this run? So I, I, the, the ads were on TV today. They started to run already. So I feel that this is... These aren't, in my world, they're not Democrats. And, they, and, the, and the reason why, to me, I, I mean, the kind of Democrat I would like to see be in charge or be elected again would be an FDR kind of a Democrat. So these are not that kind of a Democrat. These align themselves much more closely with the Clintons, that kind of a centrist. Or they call themselves centrist. But actually, when policies are put to paper, they're much, more, much, much further to the right. So I feel that he is that kind of a Democrat. But <clears throat> right now... You know, there is a, a war in the Democratic Party as to who's going to run it. And so we do hear these progressive voices start pulling ahead and eking out, as, as, especially since things are getting harder and harder for working class people. And I believe this could backfire on him because there are so many people in New York City. That are, go ahead. Let's just slow down a bit. Uh, one of the very <laughs> we have to do it in me. We have to do this in between my pie baking. <laughs> I'm sorry? I'm trying. To, I'm trying to have this conversation in between baking pies. <laughs> All right. Pumpkin well, the pies. thing that is that you said something very important, and you didn't even recognize it. One the, the one of the major reasons I believe he's running is that the party is in disarray. The leadership of the party is fractured <clears throat> and there are factions and there's not enough in every faction 
to take over the party. Mm -hmm. So the party itself is fractured at the moment. This is the perfect time to bring the party together under a unified leadership, and that is what he is presenting. Okay, or not. I'm going to say or not, because this party oh, no, is, not, I wouldn't say it was fractured, I think it's struggling to find its identity. And we are still going to fight back. I mean, at least my side of the party is going to fight that Whatever, side of the party. Whatever, that's the people. I'm talking at the very top where you and I are not permitted to do anything. Really but He's you know, they're, they're making it. He is not the clout. He has got influence, and he is moving into a breach. That's the first thing we need to recognize. Thanks for calling in. Ernie from Thank New you. York, you're on the air. How uh, are you hi. assessing this development? Hi. Hello, you trees. Uh, I was going to conquer, uh, agree with what you said when it came to the fact that he's running as a Democrat because he will not be able to uh, uh, win during the Repo Republican uh, primaries. And unless he changes his attitude, uh, he, he should be, you know, he will have to change you mean the unless, way he is. Unless Trump changes his attitude? Unless, no, unless the, uh, Bloomberg changes his attitude. Changes his mannerism. Uh, you know, he has that soft, suave mannerism, very calm-spoken. Uh, I don't think he wants to change to be close to what Trump, the way Trump is, as far as the behavior. Uh, but I also think it's probably also uh, supports the militarism. Uh, you know, I don't know much about his background when it comes to that, but I'll, I'm pretty sure if I do a little research on the in internet or whatever, he probably supports uh, the military, uh, which the Democrats do, uh, and the budget is, just keeps going up and up. Uh, also, these things, these things yeah. are ancillary. For the moment, they are not the main thing to look at. Yeah. We're looking at hardcore politics here. Well, it happens there's like no, in, in Mount no Vernon, room for New York. Dialogue or this. No, this is hard politics. In Mount Vernon, New York, I, similar, the same thing happened. The Democrats support Republicans. Uh, when things are not going right. Uh, so you correct, you know, things are not going right, so they're probably supporting uh, Bloomberg to, to run. Maybe he, he has a chance, and maybe he has, uh, you know, he has the, financially has the money uh, that he can take on and do. The um, things that yeah. are not going right is the thing, are the things that he is... Uh, you could say, excellent at fixing. He could fix it. The party, right. how many people have dropped out already because they have no money? Correct. The yeah. former mayor of uh, oh, Florida, I'm, I'm forgetting, uh, dropped out of the race. <laughs> he said he, he has uh, ceased his campaign. He didn't have one. The man had five dollars <laughs> in his so-called war chest. Yeah. You know how embarrassing that is? And he is the mayor of a town. Yep. A very nice man by yep. all accounts. Very nice and whatnot. But when he announced yep. he was dropping out, he had five dollars <laughs> in his account. Uh, why bother to insult yourself this way? Correct. So the agree. party is disorganized. Everybody can see it. They talk a good Correct. game, but there is no cohesion in this party. And so the here's a billionaire that, moving in to take his position in the party. Huh? And try his best. Here's a billionaire, a Republican billionaire, trying to take over the party. Or He's not trying to take over. The party is happy to have him. <laughs> they will go out and say what a great guy he is. Only because right. he's walking in the door with $53 billion. Correct. Okay. 
Uh, this is this is how the the hard world of politics works. People talking about their value system and how they're feeling and if they're hurting, and this has nothing to do with politics. He sees an opening, and the best. What is the best thing you think he sees in this opening? Um. Well, that he has an opportunity to take leadership and, okay. um, you know, just get his name out there. and. Oh, yeah, and yeah, like yeah, yeah. Pol- that goes with politics. But what is the okay. one strategic thing that he gets with a move like this? Well. Come on, you know the answer. One strategic thing will be, again, uh, I, I think he wants to wrestle the party uh, and, and take over. Uh, and, he's already done. And, he's already done that. Consider that done. Okay. He's spending well, money, not, millions of dollars already, placing ads all over the place. I'll give you the answer, and, and tell me if it makes sense. He, in one fell swoop, if he manages it just right, if he corrals the key people, the the strategic people, he would have gotten the black and Latino vote. Just like that. He doesn't have to go uh, canvassing. He doesn't have to do it. He just gets it. Because they're leaders. Will give it to him. Yeah, I'm telling you, this is big. Thanks, Ernie, for calling. Thank you, thank you, Richard. Thanks for contributing today, James from New York. You're on the air. Yes. Good afternoon, Patrice and family. Hello. Well, I see that Bloomberg is no more than a Republican in uh, trying to get into the Democratic Party. No, he I was, think you ought to see it a little differently. I, I beg your pardon, but I want to encourage you to see it for what it is. As I see it, okay, he is he is really a Republican. In other words, yeah. Trump wins. Trump wins. Yeah, he's a fake. He's a fake person trying to say that he's a Democrat. So either way. If Trump wins or he or he wins, he's still doing it out of that one one party for the Republicans. But let me draw your attention to history here. This is a guy who already has proven that he could manage this. How so? He has been a Republican mayor in a heavily Democratic town for three terms. I'm aware. How do you expect that? I'm aware. I'm aware about his his flip-flopping from party to party, even to the independent party. But Well, why shouldn't you flip-flop? Let me ask you, what's wrong with flip-flopping? If you are in one party, and this is the one thing I would say, encourage black people to do and Latinos and people of color across the board flip flop right, have know you been getting what you wanted you know what your flip flop is all these years at the polls at the polls at the polls you flip parts to write me in learn how to write write me in Dick Gregory <laughs> that's what you are. yeah oh, we have to do as a people don't well, go for me- either one my position right. is this. If you have been very, very dedicated to one party, unquestionably dedicated over decades, and you're getting nowhere. We need to be brainwashed because we need a brainwashing. Well, whatever it is we need, the mechanism that is available in some cases, to do that is to flip-flop. I mean, presidents are doing it. They're flip-flopping. 
Senators are doing it. They're flip-flopping. They're going where their interests are. And black people are constantly feeling torn about this, and I don't understand it. Why are you torn? Why are you so faithful to a party that has no connection to you or very little of a connection to you? Okay. All they're interested okay. in is who are you going to vote for? Give them a little okay. surprise every now and then. Flip-flop. But the thing of it, you trees, is like when, when we learn how to uh, flip flop out as I am, I'm registered as a Democrat. I never okay. vote Democrat. All right. So as opposed, you learn how to write people in, not what the party says or what's on what's called to write them in. Yeah, but you see, we 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 have to be consistent here. When you say you're a Democrat and then you change your mind and you vote another way, if you truly are a Democrat, that would be hard for you to do. I'm an independent. I, oh, okay. I vote. Oh, if you're an independent, I, 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 well, I guess you can go wherever you want to. You have that right. freedom. Maybe you but may, you may you have me down as a Democrat. Who, do, do you happen to know many people who are registered as Democrats who vote another way? No. The mm-hmm. chances are the 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 uh, the likelihood is that if you're a registered party member of any party, that's how you vote. It's well, a rare thing that millions of people will flip. I take my lessons from what they did to Cynthia McKinney, okay? When both parties, the Republicans and the Democrats, did to her what they did to her uh, 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 her seat from Congress. So that's my, my uh, she's not compromised to me. So let's not deal with all these compromised people. Well, you're talking apples and oranges. We are talking apples and oranges. You're talking tactics, mm-hmm. and I'm talking political realities. These are the okay. people in New York City and all over the country now have a new reality they must consider and mm-hmm. deal with. Mm-hmm. The question is, how are they going? Which way are they going? And to whose benefit? Mm-hmm. Well, it's not just, you know, yeah. we change tactics and all that. You could change tactics all you want. The fact is, are you going to get what you're after? Well, I think I've heard you say that you don't vote anymore. All right? All right. Well, that's a tactic. So, okay. And my tactic is to stay registered, I'm not re-registering anywhere. There's only the the bird. There's only the two wings of a bird. But remember, the bird, what controls the fight of a bird is the tail. Well, I don't want to ask you the obvious question. (laughs) I don't want to ask you the obvious question. But I thank you for calling in and sharing your thoughts with us today. Thank you so much. Bruce from New York, you're on the air. Bruce? Oh, Bruce has left us. Okay, James from New York. Did I not just talk to James? Okay, I see that. Uh, e from Edgewater, you're on the air. Good day, Beatrice. Hello. Good day. And good day good to day the PRN to audience, family. Thank you. Hello? 
I'm listening. Okay. Uh, what I is the significance fairness... of this move by? What is the significance of this move uh, by entering the race this way? Yes. Uh, I guess fairness doesn't count in anything anymore in life. And uh, it really, the thing that bothers me the most about Bloomberg entering the race at this time is that it's very unfair to all the other candidates that started from the beginning. There should be well, a guess rule what? made. Let me, let me, newsflash. They will all have to deal with it. This is politics. This one is what happens in politics or what could happen in politics. So it has happened. Now we've got to deal with it. I understand that, but I'm making a comment because it's important to me and probably important to a lot of people that if you plan to but run for the highest you, office, we have to in make politics, points today. We have to make points today that are germane to the topic. This is a vital topic. We we're not doing a little sightseeing today. We're going straight to the heart of the topic. All right. I'm sorry. Uh, all right. Uh, I think this is all rigged for uh, Biden to win the nomination. And Bloomberg's jumping in now because some have jumped out, and they want to have enough people in there to spread the vote out so it will benefit Biden in the end. They're setting things up already with the Ukraine thing as Trump against Biden. It doesn't take a genius to see it. They're going to turn the Biden-Trump thing into like the Ali Frazier thing, the, the uh, thriller in Manila. When, this, when the debates start with Biden and Trump, it's going to break all records for people watching this dog and pony show. Well, if you, we is. have been watching this contest unfold, right. uh, this is another chapter. But even so, I think you would agree that Biden is not putting out the kind of energy as a candidate as Trump or others are. He started off, he's sputtering, he is, he in fact, nominated four women <laughs> and couldn't remember their names. Uh, you know, the, the Biden candidacy right now is on shaky ground. Anybody looking at that uh, campaign can see that. He's right. looking more and more tired. He's looking more and more uh, uh, uncreative. And he's not holding. He's not holding well. He's not holding up. Right. He That's is damaging it. his candidacy by having a sleepy, a very sleepy campaign. Right. Okay. Now, it, we're not it, talking on the basis of who you like and who you don't like. We're talking on the right. basis of what we see with regard to the various campaigns. Now, we're talking about how we're going to get the American people to be tricked once again for the thousandth time. Fool me once, well, you, you shame see, on now you. Now you're moralizing. Me. But that's no, I'm not, not moralizing. What, what, you're moralizing. If, I want you, you to take finish. a look, a sober look at what has happened so far. I and what has happened is tremendous. A tremendous shift is going to occur. And it's going to cause a lot of turmoil. Now, let's deal with that. Okay, I agree 100%. Biden looks like he needs to go to the sanitarium and just take a break for a while. But this is all a part of the act. They don't want well, him to be so, Whether too it's a strong. part of the act or not, it is working according to the act. We yeah, say there's a bit, Do you agree then? Do you agree that there has been a dramatic change in the uh, presidential campaigns, all of them, as a result of the entry of this new candidate? Yes, I agree 100%. But don't forget, okay. 
you said from the start of Donald Trump's, uh, nor- since he was inaugurated as the president, that he's insane, and, and psychiatrists say he's insane. So why is he the president? It's the same because thing that worked for Biden. Allowed. It doesn't matter if Biden is a sleepy same. old guy. It's an act. They don't want whether it to be Whether it's an act or not, could you agree that whether it's an act or not, it is working. It is working working. very well because Trump, if the if if the act were not working, he would have been long gone from the White House. It is working very well. He's highly tolerated. He is greatly admired. Sure, there are millions of people who can't stand his guts, but you look at the fact of it, he could not possibly have been president this long unless his plan is working. If, it, if, if according to you, he's following a plan, a plan, right. a part of which is to be crazy. Right. Because well, he's not go. a politician. Right. He's not a politician. So he, he, he gets away with it. He gets away with it because... Can't, he gets away with it. You have to know, because that is very passive. He gets away with it. No. People make him get away with it. Let him get away with it. See? Yeah. We, have to, we have to affix the, the charge to the right people, to the right place. He didn't just do this by himself. He hasn't run the country in this ridiculous manner by himself. There are major entities all over the country helping him achieve his his craziness and selling it as normal. As they said, his brand of leadership is the new normal. We're all sinking, but it's normal. We have to, we have to see things for what they are. You don't have to agree with them at all. But clarity is going to save you and save me. I was clear quite a while ago. The very first day of his office, I was on the air telling people what I saw. I had clarity about it. I'm not boasting, by the way. To me, it was just so evident. I just didn't understand how people couldn't see it. Only now are they grudgingly admitting openly that yes there seems to be a little problem with the president yes it is a big one okay thank you so much jay you're on here from new york are you there jay yes good yeah i'm here good afternoon um you treat i think what bloomberg is doing is trying to take advantage of a situation that is basically a no-win. Um, I don't think that the Democratic Party has any type of agenda to put forward any candidate. So whoever gets the nomination is really not going to be able to do anything because I don't think there's a strong enough back it. Now, if he wants to put his money into the race, to keep progressives like Warren and um, Bernie Sanders out of the mix, because I think that's more likely what he's doing because of the message that they're trying to put forward, then so be it. But I take great offense with him for where it is a couple of months ago, he was still back in stopping frisk, and now all of a sudden, eight or nine months later, because he 
decides he wants to run for the presidency, he now wants to find him a bootlicker to allow him to come up into his pork chop chicken eating institution and apologize to black people, and now black people are supposed to go along with that. That's offensive to me. Because it's the same thing And if we look at the history of Joe Biden. Joe Biden is offensive to black people. I mean, you know, you have on, to hold on, on a different track for their uh, Let's focus with laser beam intensity on the question I asked at the beginning of the program. What is the significance of Bloomberg's intention to run for president? What is the, the significance, significance of He can do whatever he wants. He can do whatever he wants, and he can come in and try to dictate the terms any way he chooses to because of his wealth. And the unfortunate thing is that the Democratic Party, because they don't have their act together, can just allow someone like that to come in and do this. When he absolutely brings nothing to the table that I could think of that is really that much different from any other candidate. So he's basically said to the Democratic Party, if I decide I want to run for the presidency, there's nothing that you can do to stop me, and I'm going to go on and do what I have to do. You can either come along for the ride, or you don't have to come along for the ride. But I'm interjecting myself into this thing, and there's nothing that you can do to stop me. And it's no way in God's green earth that a party should allow anybody to have that type of ability to do something of that nature. There has to be some if sort the party of doesn't, as you just said, in. If the party doesn't have its act together, Not anybody could come in and do what they want if they have the resources to do it. So I would, and that's not the way suggest, a party is supposed to run. No, no, don't be so angry at the man. Like He's that. doing what is in his interest to do. Yeah, this is something that bugs me. That's not the way a party is supposed to run. Yeah, but a party is not supposed to run to where as an individual at any point in time decides that he wants to come in and, and start a yeah, race you're being when fair, there's what I'm saying, been 20 people. And, and not, but what I'm saying is that you, you have emotionalized the issue. Take a clinical look at it, and you will see exactly what it is you need to see. You don't tell people what, you know, what the man has done that you don't agree with. The fact is, he's done it. You see, don't tell I mean, people that's... how you disagree with this man because of his policies. They are already enacted. Didn't I just do uh, a, a discussion on on the the what you call it the police program and what it means not financially alone, not, not in terms of crime, sorry, but what it does and what it did. When I tell people, look, in one year alone, there, were, there was an, an excess of 900,000 such stops. What does that mean? It means people have to go find lawyers, people have to use up whatever money they have in the bank account to get out of jail. It means incredible inconvenience. It means disrupted families. That's what I'm talking about. So people are very oh, emotional about things. I'm sorry? I agree with you. He destroyed a lot of people's lives. Yes, but that's not what their complaint was about. They're talking about constitutional questions. No, I'm talking about direct destruction of people's lives. Nobody wants to take that on. Well, that's never part of the narrative, um, you well, please, because well, anyway, it's we, a we have to move along. I, I want to get at least one or two more calls before we go. Thanks, Jay, for calling in. 
Leona from Michigan. What is the significance of this move by Bloomberg to enter the presidential race? Well, in, in my uh, limited understanding and opinion, I think the significance of the move of Bloomberg getting into this race is that uh, he's in it to protect his interests, as you said, and uh, he's in it to, well, I'm, again, this is just my opinion. I think uh, he, has, he has multiple reasons, probably, but, um, but um, whatever he's in it for, he's in it to, in my opinion, keep the uh, system of racism, white supremacy in place and functioning properly, 24-7, 365. Um, how did you reach that conclusion? I think, how did I reach that conclusion? Mm-hmm. Because, because um, that is the way that this corporation, or known as the United States of America, it, that's how it operates. I mean, it's it's in the it's in the it's 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 DNA, it's bone structure. Uh, that's that's the way this organization rolls. And um, uh, that's one thing I, I well that's another that's another conversation but and and I'm so glad that you brought up his history with those nine hundred thousand stops and that that stop and frisk program whatever that uh, Bloomberg put in place as mayor of New York City. The other thing I wanted to add was that uh, he well here's the deal I, I was listening to uh, this guy named Charlie Cook on C-SPAN he's he's some kind of uh, political analyst and he said a couple of things that I thought were interesting in relation to Bloomberg because Bloomberg just launched his first video uh, campaign messenger I guess in the last 48 hours or whatever but I'm glad that Cook brought up the the stop and frisk uh, history with Bloomberg and and my understanding of what Cook said was that um, Bloomberg is in this thing, one of the reasons, is to shore up Joe Biden. If Joe Biden was stronger, Bloomberg would probably not be in the race. And if uh, Elizabeth Warren and was, was a little weaker, Bloomberg may not have uh, found it necessary to, to get in the race. But, but Fiona, uh, I'm I, interested in what, what do you think? What do I? Well, I, I, think, I think the guy, he's going to be about the business of protecting refining, maintaining, uh, establishing uh, the system of racism, white supremacy, unfortunately. Uh, and, and, that, that, and, and also he's going to help secure up the illusion that everyday people have a choice between twiddly D and twiddly dumb, that there's a, that there's a choice between uh, a Democrat and a Republican. That there's a difference on a certain level. Those higher echelons, it's not a dime's bit of difference, if you ask me. Again, I'm not, you know, I'm not in those circles, but I have had a peek into some of uh, those higher-level decisions or operatives in these, in these uh, political parties, which are really Fortune 500 co- corporations when you, when you get right down to it as well. It helps some people. You know, he, I think uh, Bloomberg's going to win not necessarily the presidency, but he's going to win no matter what. And he, that's why he's in this race, to make sure he wins and that his, his interests are protected. And maybe the other thing might be to um, avoid a contested Democratic convention next year, some kind of blow up at that convention if, everybody's, uh, uh, if everybody has a little piece of the pie and not, nobody has enough to, I don't know, Win the nomination or whatever. What blows up. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm sorry. What? They don't care what blows up. When, okay. when people at this level are in a game, their main thing is to win at all costs. They don't care who goes down. They mm-hmm. don't care what disruptions they cause. They don't care what confusion uh, occurs. They must win. That's it. Well, that brings us to the end of our program. Thanks, Leona, for calling in. Yes, ma'am. Thank Thank you you all for calling in, as a matter of fact, today. Uh, We have to continue this discussion. And isn't isn't it my mind that's funny? I was talking about the stop and frisk thing 
the, the day before, right? The day before he announced it. All right. See, we see each other tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you.